Hello and welcome to the best mods for Xbox PC, where we will be looking at some of the best mods to check out each and every single day, or at least that's the aim. There'll be something here for everyone, definitely worth checking out, use the chapters where you need them. If you do get anything out of this, consider liking, subscribing, it goes a really long way. Appreciate your time, let's get into it. In previous Bethesda titles, there was the functionality of able to loot the bodies and take the clothing of the corpse. Or well, this fantastic mod by Shade called Shade's Immersive Looting allows us to do just that. You will see when you come up to an enemy, you'll have some new options. We can strip the equipped, which is their clothing, or we can go loot all. So let's say if we just want to strip them of their cool armor or clothing, we can hit spacebar bing bada boom they are without their armor go into our inventory and then we will be able to see the items now do note sometimes using the strip only on some of the modded armor can be a little bit janky so if you find that it's not picking them up all the time just go loot all where it strips and takes all the items and then you'll get everything cool thing is combining it with a lot of the mods we've covered like project warfare get cool new weapons as well as zones spacesuit paid mod which is one of the best armor mods out there you get a really cool experience been able to loot you get such good access to so many great weapons and armor much quicker making it a lot more enjoyable looting now the other key thing to note about this mod is how it works when you disable an enemy non-lethally using something like the nova and we knock some of these guys out so here we are we've knocked some of them out and if we go up to them we can loot them but we won't be able to take their armor mainly because that can cause some glitches or issues so we'll just be able to go in and take some of their their weapons and look looks like they're jetpacks in some instances so we can still loot them and the cool thing is this is going to bypass the pickpocketing you're not going to fail and it's not going to wake them up so i really like this addition it's a cool way to do the pickpocketing system i think it's a better way of doing it so we've taken all his stuff and when he wakes up he's not going to have a weapon or a or a jump pack so that's pretty funny so we can go to this guy and do the same thing again take all these stuff so when he wakes up uh they have nothing so we just go ahead and we'll just rob all these guys of all their loot while they're asleep that guy's dead so let's see if we can wake them up now so we're just gonna shoot them rise and shine and you can see none of them have anything to shoot us with so it's pretty funny really really cool mod now there is a paid version of the looting uh corpses and i highly recommend just using shades it has great functionality works really well and is perfectly done so so the other thing i should have mentioned too is is we can actually choose where we want the loot to go to which is pretty unreal so we go into settings you can go to gameplay options and we have all these different settings for the for the immersive looting so we can also disable the stripping and this is so insane so we can go party team members and it's going to take all the loot and give it to our party members so our companions that have currently following us around then we can also send it to our bloody ship which is freaking unreal i love that and here we have the unconscious where we can pickpocket with pickpocket being the default the normal system or steal and take being the shades updated system here's a cool option too where we can change what's remaining on the body we can have tight undergarment loose or random so random is a cool one to have here we can add a cool corpse visual effects where we can go long term or short term where it's going to cause a disfigurement to some of the npcs so it's still a work in progress but it's a very cool and awesome concept so we're going to strip some of them and you'll see you'll have a mixture of different clothing when they are stripped so for instance here is another one we're just going to strip and it's going to change the undergarments which is freaking awesome and we're going to send this all to our cargo but just keep in mind we will lose xp to depending on some of these settings. But what an incredible mod, adding so much life into looting, especially when you throw in other mods where you wanna hunt for certain weapons, legendaries. This gives a lot more reason and meaning to looting again. Certainly a very special mod. Another brilliant one from Shade. And this is Shade's Immersive Looting. Fantastic, let's keep moving. Here we have an interesting spin on the Sky Suite. This one is called the Real Sky Suite and this one is by Chris Go 8 And it adds a giant, completely empty apartment block, which comes with some really unique features we haven't really ventured or seen in too many of these apartments yet but i suspect these sort of things are going to be coming more and more common first off when you get in here it is going to be mighty dark however unlike some apartments where you have to go on and flick every single bloody light on this one there is somewhat of a main switch which will turn on the lights on in the main room but unfortunately it doesn't impact the others it would be cool to see main switches being able to turn all the lights on or off as well as same for the shutters however this shutter button will open and close all the shutters in this room which is at least something worthwhile 
The other unique aspect of this is that there is a little lift in the middle of the room, but you'll be able to go up or down using some buttons. So we're seeing more of these elevators being integrated into more and more of Starfield. Now, let's just say it is down. You can also go up to it and hit a call button. So that's pretty interesting, <laughs> something a bit different. Now, in terms of the actual apartment, it is huge. So you could spend a lot of time decorating to your heart's content, but you're basically looking at like 10 huge rooms as well as heading outside, we have a pool which comes with a cover, as well as what almost looks like a ship deck, really, when you think about it. When you look at this apartment, we get a ship deck. So kind of an interesting build, but it is huge and it is completely empty. So this could be perfect for people looking to get a huge decorating chance or possibility and mucking around with this. The only other feature heading from the elevator is just down these stairs, there is a safe here. However, really the main feature of this is just the crazy view and just been so high probably one of the highest locations that you can have an apartment overlooking neon which is pretty unreal so it's an interesting place to call home and perfect for those that want to decorate it it would be cool to see a decorated version or if someone does decorate it to flick some pictures on reddit because uh, it's such a big space so much to utilize now it's important to know that the elevator on the left will no longer be your target destination for this so your sky suite will be restricted even after purchasing the sky suite because you need to head over to this one and this is the one you'll be using so you'll still have to purchase the sky suite as well from astral lounge from the bar cool housing mod let's keep moving as a part of the last update to starfield bethesda made a crazy decision to remove one of the most critical parts to shipbuilding which was the ship flip merge allowing you to break the tolerances and pretty much attach ship parts in the most fantastical way well since removing that critical aspect to the ship builders we do have a mod that will fix it this mod is called the ship part merge enabled and this is by Sadia. now once you download the mod we're gonna head to Jemison Mercantile and we're gonna purchase a slate don't mind my freaky looking NPCs so speaking to the shop owner here we're going to go the art of merging we're gonna purchase that this is a temporary fix but I also think like this functionality since it's existed on PC is almost better because it just completely removes a lot of the tolerance issues which is pretty much the reason we need a lot of the different techniques at least from my understanding so I'm just gonna give you an example of the different tolerances so when we're talking about tolerance is just how much can things overlap before it goes red so currently this functionality is off so there is no overlapping allowed without using the techniques often used by the shipbuilders which bypass some of this however on pc we get the amazing ability just to place objects within objects and have like no tolerances allowing for some really crazy builds which for the most part you can pretty much do all the same on xbox using a various number of different techniques they've all discovered so just giving you an example we'll go through the different tolerances now what's important to note when we are looking at this slate is how this mod is functioning so the art of merging basically it's going to be modifying the game's any file overriding the merge tolerances now there's a good amount of information here sort of just explaining it all but for us we're just going to go exit jump out of here and by opening the slate we will be presented with with tolerance options what we're going to do quickly just to give a good example is a tolerance of minus one minus five and then minus ten now the key thing to note with this is that this is not a permanent game file modification this mod does not permanently alter the any file it only temporarily changes it so we're going to need to set this each time we start or load up starfield however when you do set it once you've loaded into one save if you jump into another save or a different character i believe the settings will still be present it only requires a resetting when we load into the game for the first time so make note you will need to do this every time you launch starfield so we've given an example of the default tolerance we're just going to set it to minus one then we're going to jump out just give it like 5 10 15 seconds should happen pretty much instantaneously but it's always good just to give a little bit of time just because it isn't any change so we're going to jump in now and let's see if we have just a little bit of leniency when it comes to connecting some of our parts so with that same example here is some landing gear and you can see we are not going red and we've actually crossed over into another object but you can see with just minus one look how much room we have to muck around with already now you can imagine with minus 10 we're probably all the way over here but let's just have a look at what minus five is like now you still have to make sure that it's still snapping to a point but this is going to allow you to snap through certain objects so we're just going to go back to notes art of merging we're going to exit out again and we're going to go minus five this time so it's loading up go to minus five bing bada boom we'll exit out so then we can go back into the ship builder and you can see now we have a much greater tolerance without causing any error so pretty much 
we have a free range now to place it within the objects, which is unreal. So negative 10, it means it is completely almost gone, all the tolerance rules. So here is probably a better example of the tolerance rule. Just as an example, we can place many overlapping objects and we will not get any of the errors. We probably don't even need to check the tolerance of negative 10 just because we've already got, we've already got so much leeway. Negative 10 would completely remove it by the looks of it. So the other key thing to note is that the drop merge is still compatible with this mod as well and that this mod will not conflict with a lot of the other shipbuilding mods now i don't know if this is better or if we prefer to have bethesda fix the flip merge let me know in the comments because i was thinking having having such good leeway is a better result but again i'm not a pro shipbuilder so let me know otherwise a super handy mod just allowing complete freedom with your builds while still allowing for certain things like like the drop down merge to work but also giving you freedom to switch this on and off whenever you want without impacting your any file so it's a really smart and brilliant mod it's awesome to see let's keep moving the next two mods we're going to cover are the first of their kind pretty much on this channel and these two mods are related to the game's audio and the first one we're going to look at is the synth ambient music by din disco now the best way to try capture a mod like this is we're going to have to have a little listen of a few different segments of some of the various tracks that you can hear so let's go on a bit of a journey and listen and focus in on some of the gameplay music offered from these mods now first we're just going to cover the sith ambient music because it is only going to be covering areas of exploration pretty much and the next one is predominantly focused on combat so just to declutter some of the audio experience i'm just gonna pump the music and have the audio settings like this just to give you a heads up let's go on a journey Here is a snippet of another track. And here is another track. So the two composers for this or creators of this music is uh, Carl Casey and Stella Drone. Now on the mod, you can go in and check these songs out in great detail on YouTube or SoundCloud. And overall, I have to say for the synth ambient music mod, it is a nice refreshing change, especially when you're on some really desolate moons or just on any kind of planet and exploring. It does add a nice sense of change. I think it goes quite well. Now this music won't be for everyone, but it is a nice undercurrent and something worthwhile experiencing just to shake up from the old music that you're used to. There isn't a reasonable amount of range and it is important to note that this music will be playing during exploration dungeons and while you're in the cities and it consists primarily of a synth wave with a little sprinkle of electronic drone for areas like space and caves so we're going to jump into space just to give you an idea of what that's like however listening to some snippets of a few different tracks hopefully gives you enough just to get an inkling of what is sort of provided with this audio mod but let's head out into space so here we are in space this will just give you a nice little idea of what it's like So for the music in space, it is a very fitting, very eerie, chilling, in many ways relaxing. 
but also certainly expresses the emptiness and wandering of the unknown. So it's a good mix. I think they've captured it quite well, certainly for background music for a game. I think they nailed it. And again, this might not be for everyone, but it's something to mix it up for sure. And before we check out the combat version of this mod, let's just have a listen to one more track. Cool. Well, I hope that gives you a little bit of an idea of what to expect. It is certainly interesting trying to cover audio mods or background music mods. So if you have any suggestions or like a certain format, let me know. It'd be interesting to get your feedback. Now we'll get into the combat one and then I'm going to talk a bit about both of them and how they gel together. So next we're going to venture into the Sith combat music. The music is described as gnarly dark bass tracks. Let's give it a listen. Okay, here is some more. that gives you an idea of what combat's like we'll just go down and infiltrate a base just to get a gauge if there is any sort of differences here's an example of the combat music while you're on the ground And we were just listening to the synth combat music. The biggest thing is, is that the fade in and out times between the tracks aren't sort of done in a single track. It's sort of almost like two separate tracks with a fade on each other, not sort of fading into each other. So it does make for a bit of a difference in terms of immersion because the tracks do sort of get a bit jittery. One might stop, the other one kind of fades in a couple seconds later. Uh, especially if you're ducking in and out of combat, it is very noticeable. But excluding the transitions, I think these two mods as individuals are a really cool and unique and fresh way to get a new sort of feel whether you want to get pumped up with the combat or you want to get chilled and lost in exploration so some really good mod offerings here but as i said overall two fantastic overhauls to your background music here we have project warfare the hardened edition this is probably one of the most extensive weapon mods we have excluding the star wars weapon packs this probably has the most amount of value outside paid mods currently boasting seven different weapons these weapons are pretty much from call of duty warfare now now for me i haven't played many of the new call of duties so all of these are pretty much unique and new which is awesome to see and there's just so much value here as you can do a lot of different upgrades now project warfare Fair is done by 510 Dushan, and I'd also highly recommend checking out Dushan's YouTube channel. Covers his mod in extensive detail, providing updates as well as lots of cool style field gameplay. Now, the quality of these weapons is pretty much top notch, equal to or above many of the paid weapon mods. Having pristine 4K textures upscaled, beautifully designed. I love a choice of the Hornet, the HVR 45 with its blue coated finish, and just zooming in to give you an idea of the sheer detail on here. You can see it is superb. All the weapons have quite sufficient texture and detail. You have the Cam 12 shotgun 
one, very gritty and basic color palette, but still including all the awesome details and really high functionality. And then here's probably my favorite, just in terms of the aesthetics. This is the Volk, which can be quite nicely modified, but a very good futuristic look. Very fitting for Starfield, I reckon. And here we have the NV4 with a few modifications. This one also looks absolutely incredible. This one particularly stands out is probably one of the best looking weapons, just with a simple, pretty much two to three tones of colors. It just really stands out and the level of detail is up there. We've also got the Kendall 44, which currently has a suppressor on it, but it looks very nice. And we have the X Eon, a very nice looking weapon and very nicely detailed as well. Finally, we have the OSA, very distinct looking weapon as well. When it comes to the upgrade, you have a plethora of different options. Some of them custom, some of them you can throw on existing modifications to this mod. For instance, the Hornet can put on, most notably, the muzzle component, compensator, short silencer, and a tactical. Pretty sure the tactical is a part of this mod, specifically. For your grip, you just have the standard and tactical. Muzzle and battery, you have the extended and armor piercing. Internals all the usual suspects. Now we won't go through all the different weapon upgrades, but that was just to give you a little bit of an idea. But most notably, by far some of the coolest ones to upgrade are the HVR-45, coming with quite a few unique upgrades. For instance, a lot of these weapons will have unique optics. For instance, the Lambda sight. Then on the muzzle, you'll have a few different options, the Maelstrom, Tactical Silencer, and the Russian Silencer. I think the Russian Silencer is unique to this mod. And for the HVR, you have the Burst Fire, fully automatic and semi-automatic. But you get an idea with some of the upgrades the weapon just looks freaking deadly now definitely of note is the mv4 this can be loaded up with a ton of different upgrades most of note custom sight the halo focus or dot the muzzle you have all the same choices except for the garand silencer which probably looks the best out of all of them then all the usual suspects another cool one to upgrade is the volk having some custom sights as well having an option to have a silencer too which with the silencer just looks badass now the interesting thing about the volk is that we have a magazine where we can attach the xl 7.62 extra large magazine as well as an energized version doing both physical and energy damage. Internal components are pretty much for the most part pretty standard against all the different guns some having a few other options but as you can see most of these weapons come with some of their own unique customizations attachments giving us so much to muck around with and play with so much value with within all these individual weapons and the handcrafted modifications now in terms of acquiring these weapons highly recommend going to neon into the core then we'll head over to the trade authority and the good thing about this is that we can get quite a few here so previously i think in other versions at least from some of the other distributors quite limited Whereas now in the most recent edition, it's quite easy to purchase these. The neat thing is we can buy the legendary versions of many of these weapons pretty much off the bat. You may have to go and sit and wait 48 hours to refresh, but otherwise you're pretty much good to go. Comes with a ton of the various different configurations. So you'll have plenty to sort of muck around with. And in some cases, there's three or four of them on offer. So a lot, a lot of options there. You can get them all nice and quick, which I really like. I appreciate that. The other thing is we can go up to here and we can pay a thousand credits and pretty much I think get a random version of one of these weapons so there we go we got a frenzy assassin advance so if we go into our inventory we can see we got a frenzy assassin so it looks like it was a legendary in this case tried a few more times and it's going to be pretty much a lucky dip so you never know what you're going to get but some cool legendaries will definitely pop up so it's a cool little functionality you can use a vending machine or you can go directly to the trade authority there are other dispensers the other places you can purchase these weapons is in Aquila city the cheyenne system as you know but here's a killer but i suggest best one is just neon the other thing Thing I really dig about this mod is that you can go in and find all these weapons out in the wild. So for instance, here I just found the advanced OSA. You'll find them in chests on enemies. So it's pretty much added to all the weapon lists throughout the game. Really nice touch here. I always find so much value in all the weapon mods when they add it to the actual spawn list. So now you never know what you're going to get in terms of legendaries. Now, when it comes to using these weapons, they all use the standard reload animation. So we won't worry about that. All the various weapons offer a unique feel and perspective to them. So for instance, I have the Tesla AR-46 and the sights on this are probably one of the best I've seen. Very, very clean, really nice and fun to use. And you'll find that across all the various weapons. And the NV4 is no exception to this as well. It has a fantastic feel to it 
very nice scope. You'll honestly find yourself using these weapons a lot. They all, they have all been added to this game perfectly. And when it comes to the NV4, you have the amazing sights that feel and look superb. And the weapon functions, I don't know if it is like Call of Duty, but it is very fresh and feels fantastic to use within the world of Starfield. Here we have the HVR 45, and this thing just fires like an absolute maniac. Taking it off slow mode, it's by far the fastest firing, or almost, I think. And it also comes with this legendary scope or sight or hollow, and it is just so much fun to use. Certainly from all the various mods we've checked out, this is probably one of the best weapon mods we've seen, best free weapon mods in terms of having such a huge collection and various different types even the pistol i love without the uh, any kind of scope or anything it's just a nice really much more potent weapon to try use from a distance adding a lot more skill involved so the hornet is a lot of fun to use all these weapons definitely add a sort of a fresh experience highly recommend this mod we won't go through every single weapon but just know they feel and work amazing now i'm not 100 sure how close they are to the call of duty but you can let me know in the comments if you think and feel they are very similar or if it offers a very fresh experience being in starfield but for me because i haven't used these weapons at all ever this is by far a must-have weapon mod thank you very much for watching if you get anything out of this consider liking subscribing commenting let me know what you think about some of these mods you can let me know what mods you'd like me to cover or if there's anything or if there's anything on your mind just just drop it in the comment thanks again and peace